Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Through the Pages. I have a stupendous biography to bring to you about a man I adore. Harvey Milk, His Lives and His Death, by Lillian Faderman. Um, this is the first biography of him I have read. Um, he came up big time in another book I reviewed on here, When We Rise by Cleve Jones. Um, enormous recommendation on this. Go buy it right now. Pause the video. Skip the rest of the video if it means you're going to buy this book. Um, I like this book more than this book. Quick excerpt. But um, I learned a lot from this, and I will say I am not new to Harvey Milk. Um, so initially, the what I would say, semi-fictionalized movie, just simply titled Milk. Um, that that was the first, like, introduction for me. Um, and then just kind of a name that kept coming up. I'm, you know, I enjoy politics, which feels like a weird thing to say sometimes, but, like, um, I guess not, like, the day-to-day -day contention, but just kind of, like, seeing the evolution, people who um, struck chords and, and made move movements happen. Um so it's seen the, the biography, or the, not biography, the documentary, um, The Lifetimes of Harvey Milk, and then recently this one from Cleve Jones was super fascinating. Now, Cleve has his own story. This is not him as the tale of him spectating Harvey. It's not that, and it was a little bit more even personal insights. What's going on there? And he didn't agree with him on some politics stuff. Harvey had come from sort of a libertarian stance, sense, ah, stance, sense, either one. And... You know, Cleve and a lot of people being pretty far lefty, um, and like me. And so grappling with the fact that they are addressing the same things, but that under underbelly of it is different. And so that I found very fascinating, that they could work so cohesively when such a monumental thing is not exact the same between them. Um, so when it says his lives and his deaths, this man gives me hope in a lot of ways. Um, I'm happy with where I'm at in life. Um, not where life is at maybe is where I should say it. Like COVID, like the, the state of the world, like there's a lot of things, um, but like career, like I'm, I'm really happy with how my little fermentation business is going through Nine Cultures, um, but um, it was 40, he was 41 years old when he just felt like I can't, I'm not doing anything. Like, he, he would try things. He'd move to a city, ended up back at his parents' house. He was in the financial sector. Can't do that. And, and just back and forth and just really floundering, honestly. And some of that will come from being in an era where being openly gay is not allowed and that what is one of the biggest parts of yourself needs to be suppressed or the more you suppress it, the more you'll achieve. And so it kind of brought out a macho man side of him not only to cope with society, but his father. And it was very interesting to see not only where he came from, but how long it took him to get to the point where we see him. You know, um, I think of Paulo Coelho, one of my favorite writers, that he was a lyricist for a long time. Most people knew him from music. Eventually started writing books. What some would say late in life, relative to, you know, when creative careers blossom. And people wouldn't even buy The Alchemist. He, like, he was pushing that out there like, eh, nah, mistake there. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, someone said yes, and that was a very good call for that business. Um, but so Harvey had a dual oppression. He not only was gay, but he was Jewish. And so this is something that he was able to kind of buck the system in the anti-Semitic lanes preparing him for the bigger stage of gay rights, which he was really at the helm of. And I think sometimes, and this can be my upbringing, this could be the fact that the city I live in, Peoria, doesn't have a huge Jewish population, or it's not like, I don't, I don't have any friends who are Orthodox Jewish. I don't ha there's just not a lot around. Um, but so to see how coming up Jewish was not just a big part of his life through traditions and the way that a family operates, but 
and the oppression and the, the spite from other people. And so to see the, the level of that and to see him navigate both of these was astounding, but it kind of made me realize like even later on as, as his whole scope of the focus seems to be in gay rights, and it's not to say that as a politician that's all he was. He was very open-minded in, in tackling a lot of issues that fell under the just hum, humanitarian rights. Um, Kind of back to the libertarian thing, but also, but a little bit more um, kind than I would say some libertarians can be. Um, but I didn't see him as a Jewish man, and I think almost first and foremost that's how he saw himself, and was very, it, it, according to the book, very vocal about not even saying I'm Jewish, saying I'm a Jew because he said it hit harder. And seeing that and knowing he wanted to continually buck the system because it laid in so much oppression or it made it okay to look down on these groups or it made the hierarchy allowed. And so his kind of rugged adolescence having to navigate that while faking a whole other life prepped him to be what I see as one of the most genuine politicians we've ever known. I, I, w I went to California about a month ago, and when I was in San Francisco, the only thing I wanted to do, because I was only there for a very brief time, mostly Southern LA, and was walk around the Castro. And it was surreal, honestly. Like I bought this book at, at a bookshop in the Castro, used the bookshop, the bookmark, said, Castro Street on it like I it, it was it was very surreal and then to like that that bookstore I think was like 496 Castro Street um and for him to say like got the apartment at 577 Castro and it's like like sometimes I feel like the the greatest figures in history are so distant that they're like mirages or or, or just something you hear about where it and it's not to say that walking around there like I knew him better because obviously, you know, things change, all the thing, you know, coffee shops, all every all the, the cultural hubs shift. But to see the murals, to see the the center that he had built there, which I, I'm gonna butcher the the full name of it. It's like the Center for Diversity and, and Equality. It was like a kid's center where, where you could go and have all types of stuff to learn and just program the city and have the kids having nothing to do. Um but he, he got going late in life and lost several times. And recently a friend, Peter Kobach, ran for city council here and it was his second time and he lost. And I sent him a message that night that my first thought was to Harvey Milk and that he lost those races time after time. And then when he won, he changed the world. And I, I wasn't saying that to pressure Peter to just think about running again. Like, take your time. Like, the, I can't imagine doing a thing where it's, is this going to be my career? No. Nope. Okay. Bet. Like, I running, like, elections are, are hard enough on all of us. Like, to be in it is crazy. To, to be in it, lose time and time again, have your, your partner, the love of your life, Scott, leave you because of it. And say, I have to stick with it. That, that's enormous to me um he he's an inspiring man be uh, it's like an understatement of the world but like on one of the levels in which he's inspiring to me is that he he remained outwardly very positive and knowing that like leading with love was ultimately the way to go, even if in private he would erupt or get angry or, or yell a lot. Um, I think he knew the boundaries of who he was around, and then when he had to have the face on, he knew hate wasn't the way, regardless of the letters that are getting sent to his house, the things people are telling him they're going to do to him if they get their hands on him, all that type of stuff. In the face of that, he, he kept the movement moving forward in the way that it needed to which internally had to be so difficult 
to, to stomach that, to go through it alone, he would often ta times talk about, and I'm sorry this is becoming like a review of Harvey Milk, but it's a biography. It, it's incredibly well written and it's very well researched, but it feels like it's just like a pure camera on his life. Like it feels like there's no barrier between his life book to me. Like, and that's the best. I don't, I don't feel the author's presence in this at all. Um, and that's truly what I, I really like about it. Um, but what I wanted to convey is that he, you know, outside of recording those famous three tapes, you know, should this be, should I die in the event of assassination? He would say it a lot. He said, he said, if a bullet is to enter my brain, may it shatter every closet door. And he, I think he knew how his life was going to end. And every day I would think about backing down to quit. Like I, to think that it's going to end that way, to not be able to say, you know, I've made a lot of head ground, headway here. At this time I'm going to back out so I can live the rest of my life, let someone else take the helm, hopefully back out before anything happens. He kept going and his life and his death made impacts beyond what anyone was capable of. He, he did so much for equality in the world and I, I don't think we sing his praises enough. Whether you're gay, straight, anything, it doesn't fucking matter. He helped you. And that's, he, he is just a model man in my eyes. Honestly, like, if I could be a tenth of the man Harvey Milk is, I would die very happy. So, much like what's reading this book, if I go too long, I get a little teary-eyed. Um, I'm going to call the video at this point, but, um, if you're going to read a biography of him, I can't say this in comparison to other biographies, but she, she absolutely nailed it. Um, I, I think there's more from Lillian Faderman. Um, this is, I believe this was in kind of like a series that Yale was doing on, on people and biographies. It's incredible. It's, it's perfect. Had I read a, a biography that butchered the story, I would be heartbroken. I, like, I... This, this is incredible. Read this, then go read this. I have a review of it up on the page also. Um, Harvey Milkman.